the movie opens with a view of the beautiful beach in Sicily, followed by a meteorologist forecasting the weather conditions for the summer and how it's going to be the hottest of the last 150 years. In the meantime, the final mass for Don Gabriel, a priest in Sicily, has begun. Meanwhile, Lucia and Omar are sharing an intimate moment in her room, when Lucia's closest friend sends a text, inquiring about her whereabouts. She quickly gets ready to attend Don Gabriel's last mass at the church. Her boyfriend wonders why she's going to church on a weekday, and Lucia explains it's a special occasion. When Omar asks how Don Carlo, the main priest, will be able to manage, Lucia responds sarcastically, telling him to ask Don Carlo himself. Just then, Lucia's mom walks into the room and finds them hastily covering themselves on the bed. She questions if that's their method of studying and points out the need to open the windows due to an unpleasant smell. Then, she requests Lucia to accompany her to Mrs. Brancatelli's for a blood pressure check. However, Lucia insists on going to church. Her mom reminds her it's not Sunday, and Lucia playfully tells her to mind her own business. Lucia and Omar proceed to the church. Upon their arrival, Don Carlo delivers a farewell address in honor of Don Gabriel. They sit next to Valentina, who greets Omar and detects the scent of Lucia, implying they had engaged in intimate relations. Lucia hushes her. Don Carlo summons Don Gabriel, playfully pats him on the cheek, praises him for his dedication, and Don Gabriel expresses gratitude for the church's hospitality. Don Carlo announces the impending arrival of a new deacon, and Omar inquires about the role of a deacon to Lucia, who explains that a deacon is someone who will soon be ordained a priest. Following the service, Lucia advises Omar to inform his father about their relationship and their plan to travel to Rome the following year. Lucia senses Omar's reluctance to disclose this information to his father, but Omar reassures her that he would indeed have the conversation. In a subsequent scene, Valentina knocks at Lucia's door, requesting that she hastens her preparations. On entering Lucia's room, Lucia offers to assist with her makeup, but Valentina declines and tells her to help find her a boyfriend before she leaves. She reminds Lucia of the time she introduced her to Omar, emphasizing that it is now time for Lucia to return the favor. She also mentions not wanting to be left behind, playfully noting she's the oldest virgin in town, because, clearly, being a virgin is now a crime punishable by a lifetime of awkward family dinners. While at the beach, Valentina notices Don Nicola, the new deacon, engaging in a game with some individuals. She is captivated by his striking appearance. Nicola approaches them and introduces himself and Lucia seizes the opportunity to tell him about Valentina's likeness for him. Nicola then shows off a necklace featuring a cross, symbolizing his status as a deacon, causing Valentina to feel embarrassed. As the evening progresses at the beach, Lucia and her friends, Taru, Ignazio, and Salvor are seated with Nicola. Nicola shares details about his background, family, and aspirations to become a priest and settle in Sicily. Valentina informs him that Lucia will soon be departing to study in Rome. Nicola inquires about her area of study and the identity of Omar, as mentioned by her friends. The conversation delves into Nicola's romantic life, leading to a toast to the summer at the villa. At the summer villa, Lucia reprimands Matteo, one of the kids for consistently being the last to arrive each year. While instructing the children on the exercises in their books, Valentina arrives with messy hair, apologizing for her lateness. Lucia notices Valentina's weird makeup and hairstyle and takes her out in order to fix them. As she fixes her hair, Valentina brings up Lucia's promise to help her find a romantic partner. Valentina confesses her desire to get intimate with Don Nicola. Lucia is surprised to hear this and reminds Valentina that Nicola is on the verge of becoming a priest. Valentina gets pissed at Lucia and calls out to Turu to help fix her hair. Lucia makes her way to the park, where the alpacas reside. She exchanges pleasantries with the nuns and Nicola before inquiring about what Nicola was up to. Nicola informs her that he is attempting to repair the long, spoiled water pipe. While Lucia doubts that he will be able to fix it, water suddenly spurts out, splashing both Lucia and the nun. The nuns show admiration for Nicola's proficiency in all tasks. Meanwhile, Valentina and her friends are at a corner gushing on Nicola's striking appearance. It appears fixing pipes and stealing hearts are all in one day's work for Nicola. Lucia and Nicola tidy the premises and provide water for the alpacas. Nicola can't believe that he will see alpacas in Sicily. He recounts how Don Carlo shared a tale of the Marquis, while Lucia shows him a portrait of the Peruvian lover and narrates how they acquired the painting. They discuss how the villa wasn't cared for and Don Carlo's plan to sell it and transform it into a luxury resort. Nicola views this as a lucrative opportunity, but Lucia laments the loss of everything she holds dear. Still at the villa, Nicola explains a game to the group, but Valentina won't pay attention 
Instead, she asks about Lucia's conversation with Nicola and inquires if he's gay. Lucia hushes her and tells her to focus on the instructions. As they form teams, Valentina asks Nicola to join hers. During the game, Don Carlo meets Nicola and Valentina in a compromising position, but they claim they're just playing games. Nicola notices Valentina is up to something and walks out. After the game, Valentina tells Lucia that Nicola is interested in her too, but Lucia thinks Valentina is just being delusional. Valentina begs Lucia to help her so she can seduce Nicola, but Lucia asks her to help her water the plants in the night in exchange for her favor. Suddenly, they find Nicola singing and playing guitar for the children, and Valentina gazes longingly at him, wishing she were the guitar in his hands. Just then, a nun approaches Lucia and informs her that Don Carlo wants her to give Nicola the key to the park, which she agrees to do soon. Later, Don Carlo finds Nicola meditating in the church and advises him at the parish house, sharing his own experiences and reminding Nicola that it's normal to feel tempted and attracted to women. Nicola reaffirms his commitment to following Christ's path and dedicating himself to his faith. Meanwhile, at Lucia's home, she is seen having dinner with her family. Lucia's mom praises Nicola's contributions to the community since arriving in Sicily. After dinner, Lucia video calls Omar, discussing how others have been admiring and crushing on Nicola. Lucia asks if Omar has spoken to his dad about their plans, and Omar assures her he will soon. The conversation takes an unexpected turn as Omar asks Lucia to reveal her upper body which she does happily. The next day, Lucia and Valentina go shopping for outfits, and Lucia mentions that their friends Salvo and Ignazio have started noticing Valentina. Valentina dismisses the idea, saying she's known them since middle school and isn't interested. At the beach, the group from the villa gathers to play games, dressed in their finest attire. Nicola explains the rules, and Lucia suggests he choose Valentina for his team, but Nicola selects Lucia instead. Valentina's disappointment is evident on her face, but she keeps calm. During the game, Matteo takes a risky jump and gets injured, causing Lucia and Nicola to rush him to the hospital. At the hospital, Matteo's parents meet up with them and express their gratitude towards Nicola and Lucia for their help and offer Nicola money for beer, which he initially declines, but later accepts when they say it's for a summer camp donation. As they bid farewell, Matteo's mom gazes lustfully at Nicola, prompting Lucia and Matteo's dad to notice, and he calls his wife to order. Seems Nicola's charm is one emergency no one prepared for. On their way back to the villa, Lucia and Nicola decide to get the beer. They discuss his relationship with Don Carlo and his obsession with taking substances. Lucia asks Nicola why he became a priest, and he jokingly replies that it's to avoid paying property taxes. As they discuss, Lucia receives a text from Valentina inquiring about their whereabouts and if she's mentioned her to Nicola. Nicola reveals he's aware of Valentina's feelings and others too, but his focus is on being a priest. Lucia suggests they head back to the villa and they leave. Back at the villa, Nicola and Lucia are seen watering plants, playfully splashing water at each other. Unknown to them, Carmen is secretly watching, and she reports her suspicions to Don Carlo, implying a romantic relationship between the two. Don Carlo dismisses her concerns, trusting Nicola's integrity. He encourages Carmen to keep observing, to satisfy her curiosity. The next morning at the villa, Nicola, Teru, and Salvo are busy arguing about games, while Carmen intently watches, neglecting one of the kids' requests for help with an assignment. Valentina blames Lucia for drawing Carmen's attention and urges her to set her up with Nicola. Later, Nicola and Lucia are in the park taking care of the alpaca with Carmen sitting in a corner observing them. Later, at the beach, Lucia walks up to her friends and suggests they visit Spakasa the next day. Teru declines due to his mom's birthday, and Nicola hesitates, citing Carmen's constant surveillance. However, his friends persuade him, thinking Carmen might not follow them due to the heat. The next day, they arrive at the Spakasa, and Carmen indeed follows them. Valentina asks Lucia when to remove her sarong, hoping to show off her bikini to Nicola, but Lucia doesn't respond. While the others gather branches, Lucia encourages Nicola to explore the fortress with Valentina, attempting to set them up. Nicola is initially reluctant but agrees. Carmen tries to follow, but Lucia diverts her attention by asking for help making Sipilate on their way to the fortress. Nicola is busy taking pictures. As he turns around, he notices that Valentina has removed her sarong, revealing her bikini. He is surprised, but keeps quiet till they reach the fortress. While Nicola takes more pictures, Valentina purposely ties her bikini to a nail and calls for Nicola's help. As Nicola is about to help her, she unties her bikini, standing, smiling seductively at Nicola who stares in shock and disappointment. Later, as they gather, 
Lucia asks Valentina about her encounter with Nicola, trying to sniff out if they got intimate. But Valentina brushes her off, saying they just had a good time. After a while, Lucia suggests heading home, as it'll soon rain. At night, Lucia video calls Omar sharing gossip about Valentina's encounter with Nicola, stating that Nicola isn't a trusted priest. Omar asks her if Nicola had course with Valentina, and Lucia replies that she wasn't sure, as she wasn't with them. Lucia asks him if he was able to tell his dad about their plan. Omar replies that he has been busy and hasn't been able to do so. Lucia gets pissed and ends the call as Omar tries to flirt. Don Carlo meets Nicola in the church looking worried, but they don't exchange words. The following day at church, during the Holy Communion, Nicola gives the congregation communion, while Valentina smiles warmly at him. Meanwhile, Don Carlo is asleep. When Lucia comes forward to receive communion from Nicola, he hesitates briefly staring at her before he finally gives her the Holy Communion. After the Mass, Don Carlo and Carmen discuss how people gave so many offerings, all thanks to Nicola. Carmen suggests that they buy the Golden Crucifix on Amazon. Surprisingly, Don Carlo asks Carmen if anything happened at the Spacosa because Nicola suddenly wants to visit his family in Rome, and he seems worried. Carmen replies that nothing happened, and that maybe Nicola was summoned by his family to come home. In the next scene, Matteo's parents, along with the nuns and others, are busy working in the park. Lucia joins them, and Nicola excuses himself. She quickly follows him, attempting to stop him, but Nicola tells her that he is busy. Lucia tells him that if he is avoiding her she will leave, assuring him not to worry about people knowing what transpired between him and Valentina. Surprisingly, Nicola reveals that nothing happened between him and Valentina. He questions if Lucia enjoyed testing him despite confiding in her, and he leaves angrily. In Rome, Nicola pays a surprise visit to his father. Upon ringing the doorbell, his father opens the door with a look of astonishment, as he is not anticipating his arrival. Nicola's father warmly welcomes him inside and summons his daughter Damiana, who is carried away by loud music with her boyfriend. They all move to the balcony. Damiana expresses joy at seeing her brother and embraces him warmly. Her boyfriend, Michelle, introduces himself to Nicola, commenting on his unexpected appearance. Curious about Sicily, they inquire about his plans for dinner. Nicola reveals he will be staying for a few days before returning. They engage in a light-hearted banter ensues, and Nicola's father suggests he go shopping and prepare dinner for the family. During dinner, they ask Nicola about Sicily, inquiring about the weather over there. Suddenly, Michelle asks him if he got into trouble or got exiled. Nicola's dad quickly asks him to stop making bad jokes, and they decide to change the topic. Back at the villa, the kids are asking Nicola's whereabouts and when he will be back. Valentina assures them that he will be back soon and asks Lucia if she is aware of when Nicola will be back. Lucia doesn't reply and tells her that they need to get the stuff they are using inside before leaving, as it's about to rain. Back at Nicola's family house, his dad meets him drinking coffee and Nicola makes a joke about the inscription on his dad's t-shirt. They begin to discuss Nicola and his dad asks if he's happy with his life. Nicola opens up that he feels guilty for not being enough, and he always feels as if he's running away from something. His father encourages him and makes jokes about Damiana's tracking anklet, which she hears as she enters the room with Michelle. Nicola asks that they pray together and also asks them to pray for him, which they all proceed with. In the next scene, Lucia comes into the living room to inform her parents that she is going to check on the alpacas at the villa and finds them making out on the couch. They playfully reassure her that she will always be their only child and she leaves the lovebirds for the villa. At the villa, Nicola joins Lucia unexpectedly. On seeing him, she inquires about Rome, and he reciprocates by asking about their well-being. Lucia requests Nicola's assistance in bringing in the children's crafts. Meanwhile, Carmen secretly enters the villa to monitor them, accidentally dropping her cigarette on the ground covered in dry grass, causing a fire outbreak. While Lucia and Nicola are occupied with the children's crafts, they hear the alpacas humming and notice smoke coming out from the alpaca's ranch. They rush to the ranch and find it ablaze. They free the alpacas and evacuate everyone from the villa to prevent any harm. Nicola contacts the fire department and encourages the nun to entertain the children to divert their attention from the unfolding events. Meanwhile, Matteo counts the alpacas and realizes that Al Pacino, one of them, is missing. He hurries to the ranch to find it, with Lucia and Nicola following closely to prevent him from entering the burning area. Despite Lucia's warnings, Nicola bravely enters the burning ranch to rescue Al Pacino. Subsequently, the fire department arrives, and Nicola comes out of the ranch unharmed with Al Pacino in his arms. 
Overwhelmed with relief, Lucia embraces Nicola as they watch the firefighters put out the fire. Later that evening, as it begins to rain, Lucia escorts Nicola to his doorstep, and as Nicola bids her goodnight, she leans in and kisses him. Without saying a word, Nicola goes inside and shuts the door behind him. The following morning, journalists visit Lucia at her residence to hear her account of the previous night's events. Meanwhile, at the church, a reporter gathers Don Carlo, Don Nicola, the mayor, Carmen, and a few others to reflect on the happenings at the villa. Don Nicola humbly attributes the success not only to himself, but also to the nuns and Lucia. While the reporter asks questions of Don Carlo, he frequently interrupts his responses. Growing impatient with the reporter, the mayor snatches the microphone and announces a grand celebration, following the Immaculate Conception Mass to honor Nicola's courageous act. Afterwards, Nicola and Lucia arrive at the villa. The children, upon seeing Nicola cheer for him in appreciation of his noble actions. Matteo presents Lucia with a painting, while Valentina approaches her to compliment Nicola and expresses her desire for him. They then capture the moment with a group photograph. As Nicola admires Matteo's painting, one of the kids calls his attention to help her with an exercise. Meanwhile, Lucia is taking out a painting from the burnt park. Then Valentina tries to get close to Nicola, but Carmen interrupts her and Nicola leaves to find Lucia. He finds her in the storeroom and demands that Lucia apologize for kissing him the other night. As Lucia stares at him without uttering a word, Nicola approaches her and begins to kiss her. The two get intimate in the weirdest place. Valentina will definitely be the happiest when she finally discovers what's going on between Nicola and Lucia. As Matteo, Valentina, and the reporters search for Lucia and Nicola, Nicola hastily dresses up and meets them at the front door, pretending not to know anything about Lucia's whereabouts. Nicola diverts their attention to go help out the kids with their exercise, and they all leave. He then sends a text to Lucia asking her to have dinner with him at night, before leaving with Matteo. Later, after Lucia is out of the store, the group makes plans to have a drink later that night, but Lucia declines that she won't be available. Valentina quickly pulls her aside, reminding her of her promise to hook her up with Don Nicola. Valentina also tells her that she's yet to get intimate with Nicola, and he'll soon become a priest. Lucia confronts her about lying that something happened between her and Nicola at the Spacaza, and tells her that maybe Nicola isn't really interested in her, and she should let it go but Valentina still urges Lucia to help her. But Lucia bids her goodbye and goes home to prepare for her dinner date with Nicola. At Lucia's home, she prepares for her dinner date with Nicola and steps downstairs to bid her parents goodbye. She meets her father setting the table and gives him a kiss before going out to meet Nicola, who is waiting for her outside. Meanwhile, Valentina and her friends are out to have drinks. She asks after Nicola and Turu tells her that Nicola texted him that he won't make it. Turu asks what will happen if a priest gets intimate. Valentina jokingly tells him that Nicola isn't gay because Turu is gay. Taru smiles and tells her that he isn't talking about himself. Valentina seems not to notice that something is going on between Lucia and Nicola. Valentina quickly defends Lucia, saying she doesn't do such things. But at the same time, she's bothered about what Taru just said. Meanwhile, at the beach, Nicola and Lucia arrive and get the last available table. The chef leaves to go prepare their order while the two have their seats. Subsequently, Carmen soliloquizes is at home, blaming her late husband for her smoking habit and setting the villa ablaze. She feels that she should have heeded people's advice to move back to Italy. Suddenly, her doorbell interrupts her thoughts, and she opens her door to Valentina. Obviously, Valentina has decided to take action before things get out of leg, I mean, out of hand. Back at the beach, Nicola shares fond memories of his kind-hearted mother. As they discuss, Lucy notices the chef eavesdropping and tells Nicola not to turn around, but he ends up turning to look at him, and the chef smiles at him. Nicola tells Lucia that she reminds him of her mom. He asks if Valentina suspects something going on between them. Lucia reveals that they've been distant since Nicola's arrival. The chef compliments them, calling them cute, and they smile shyly. Meanwhile, Valentina and Carmen drive to Lucia's house and wait for them there. Valentina worries that they might be back as Carmen took long to prepare. Back at the beach, Nicola and Lucia are done eating and are strolling. He makes a joke about confessing their affair to Don Carlo and reveals that he is thinking of giving up everything. Lucia asks how they'll get home and Nicola playfully suggests running off to Rome. They strip and run into the water. After they come out from the water, Nicola jokingly tells Lucia that he is going to inform Don Carlo of their relationship. Lucia replies that he is going to spoil Don Carlo's party and Nicola kisses her. Meanwhile, Carmen plots how they are going to get videos of Lucia and Nicola once they come back. 
While Valentina tells her to shut her mouth, she throws out her cigarette and crushes it with her shoe to prevent another unfortunate fire outbreak. Carmen goes on, on how she is going to send the videos, they will get to TV stations so that Nicola and his family will leave the country out of shame. While Carmen tries to get another cigarette, Valentina offers her another one. Subsequently, Nicola drops off Lucia at her residence. As Lucia perceives Carmen's cigarette smoke, Valentina comes out from her hiding spot and confronts Lucia about deceiving her on various matters, including her relationship with Nicola, despite asking Lucia to set her up with him. While Lucia tells Valentina to lower her voice so as not to wake up the sleeping Carmen, Valentina further accuses her of feigning righteousness while having an affair with Nicola. Lucia, in a fit of anger, accuses Valentina of being obsessed with having an intimate relationship with Nicola. Valentina in her defense explains that her intentions were not driven by obsession, but rather by a desire to share a final moment together before Lucia leaves for Rome. Lucia asks Valentina if she is going to tell others what happened, but Valentina offers no response and walks away angrily. At Lucia's house, Omar arrives unannounced. He praises Lucia for her actions during the fire outbreak, having seen reports of it on the news and YouTube. He apologizes for not informing his father about her sooner and expresses his family's pride in her, regardless of her Italian and Catholic background. Meanwhile, Valentina, Omar, and Lucia's parents meet Carmen still in her car on their way to church. Lucia's father wakes her so she can return home and freshen up. During the church service, the choir performs their hymn, followed by Don Carlo delivering his sermon. During the sermon, Don Carlo invites Nicola and Lucia to the front of the church, commending them for their contributions at the villa, the park, and with the children. He praises them for exemplifying Christian values to the community and expresses hope that Nicola will remain with them as a priest due to his good deeds. After the mass, Nicola enters the parish house upset that Lucia did not inform him of Omar's visit. Lucia follows him, explaining that she was unaware of Omar's plans to visit. She assures Nicola that she will disclose their relationship to Omar. After the mass, the big party to celebrate Nicola and Lucia starts off. The mayor gives Lucia and Nicola a medal and decides to do a story on his social media platform. The mayor asks Lucia if she has anything to say. She responds that she has, but it will be in the form of a request. She requests that the park and villa should be protected by the National Trust in order to keep it away from danger and to last for a long time. Everyone present at the party agrees with Lucia's idea and claps for her. The mayor ends up giving in to Lucia's request. As the party progresses, Don Carlo complains to Carmen that the substances he took made him sleep off during mass, and he has created a bad impression. Carmen assures him that nothing is wrong with sleeping, as it helps regenerate the body. Don Carlo observes Nicola and Lucia dancing, while Carmen goes on telling him that she smoked a cigarette that tastes like rosemary. Still at the party, Omar asks Valentina if she was able to sleep with Nicola. She walks away angrily telling him to ask Lucia what happened. The subsequent scenes show Nicola and Lucia engaging in passionate lovemaking, their moments of desire and pleasure lingering on. Meanwhile, at the parish house, the journalist announces that the villa and park have been placed under the protection of the National Trust. Additional scenes capture Nicola and Lucia sharing intimate moments. Later, Lucia reveals her affair with Nicola to Omar, who leaves with a heartbreak. At the parish house, Don Carlo shares his youthful sports exploits with Nicola, encouraging his athletic pursuits. When Nicola asks why he's still awake, Don Carlo mentions watching a sports show since Carmen also watches it. He advises Nicola that no one is perfect, and therefore he should always pray for his sins, think of others, and not of his privileges. Don Carlo appears to dispose of his medication, but secretly retrieves it after Nicola leaves, struggling with his addiction. At the beach, a journalist announces the end of summer and the return of students to school. Nicola is seen smoking prompting Lucia to inquire about his newfound smoking habit. Nicola admits to trying it out, but finds it gross. They engage in a heated discussion regarding Nicola's decision to pursue a priesthood while still maintaining a relationship with Lucia. Lucia informs him that she cannot continue the affair as she wishes to be with Omar, and they leave the beach. Upon their return, they share an emotional farewell. Nicola assures Lucia that he will visit her upon her return from Rome and Lucia vows to block his contact information leading to a light-hearted exchange between the two. Nicola jokingly mentions that he will greet her during his first Angelus, to which Lucia playfully suggests that he gives her the middle finger instead. They share a laugh, and Nicola affectionately kisses Lucia on the cheek before bidding her farewell. Later, at Lucia's residence, she is greeted by Valentina at the front door, and they embrace each other, both overcome with emotion. Five years later, 
Lucia meets Nicola in Rome. They embrace each other and inquire about each other's well-being. Nicola's spouse approaches them with their child, and Lucia notices Nicola's marital status. She warmly greets Nicola's wife and daughter. Nicola recounts how he and Lucia met to his wife, who then steps away to get her bag. They engage in conversation about their current lives before Lucia bids Nicola farewell, promising to reconnect. As Lucia leaves, Nicola calls and gives her the middle finger. Upon returning home, Lucia shares with Valentina the details of her unexpected meeting with Nicola, his wife and daughter. Valentina inquires if Nicola has maintained his good looks, to which Lucia responds that he is not as attractive as he once was. They happily reminisce about the scorching summer they experienced five years ago and all that happened at the villa.